Hey everyone, it's Chris. I am so excited to be back here with an impromptu video. This is like our Heart Centered Apps webinar series we're doing with Airtable, but we're doing an offshoot, Heart Centered Apps plus AI. And today I am with Lisa Vo. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you, Chris? Fine. Now, Lisa, you and I know each other from the Airtable group on Facebook. That is correct. Yep. Now, we got like 10,000 people in there. <laughs> yeah, it's grown immensely. I remember the first time you posted in there and I was just looking for a community to kind of like give me help, um, you know, support questions. And yeah, it's just grown in the past few years. It's my first time attending Daretable, which is coming up pretty soon. So super excited for that. Oh my gosh, I did not you were an attendee till just now. So you're one of the attendees? I am, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is so crazy, all the good stuff are gonna happening, but this is not about their table. So yeah. Lisa reached out to me, um, I guess about a month or so ago, and I posted a little bit about AI. I've been posting more and more about AI lately. It's weird, people are like, do Airtable content. I never do Airtable content. Then AI comes along and I'm posting all this Airtable content yeah. <laughs> uh, about getting together on this video today. So why don't you share with us a little bit about what you do and how you use Airtable and then how you use AI. And we'll unpack that. Sure. Uh, so I do multiple different you know, streams of income. So main thing is I am licensed. Uh, I'm a licensed realtor in Texas. I'm also running a transaction coordinating company. So basically we do all the paperwork on the agent's behalf. Uh, and then recently, the past few years, I use a specific CRM, um, a software system called Follow Up Boss. So I'm an approved Follow Up Boss consultant. So what do I do all day? I talk to agents about their systems, uh, what technology they can integrate together to make their lives just much easier, which led me over to Airtable. Um, you know, I was using Google Spreadsheets. I was using Monday.com, Trello, all these different productivity tools. And Airtable literally encompasses it all. Like it just does amazing things. There's so much to learn. If you haven't checked it out, really high recommend Airtable. And so I actually help people where they use Follow Boss for just managing their day-to-day -day contacts and things like that. And once they go under contract or they have a listing, all of that information goes to Airtable so that they can run what we call their back office, entire productions. Um, basically, every single analytic is inside Airtable, and that's what's powering their entire operations. Uh, amazing. And how in the world did you go from a hundred different tools, monday.com, Trello, all the ones you mentioned, to Airtable, to now getting involved and in starting to work more with AI? I mean, does it feel like you've jumped through three major hoops in the past, what, three years, four years? Yeah, it's a really quick time period, just looking at how technology has developed over time. And, you know, you hear in the industry, the newest, coolest uh, productivity tools. So I'm always checking out different YouTube, you know, and Facebook and browsing the community for what's next. And so AI had came up to say, this can save you hundreds of hours, right? And I'm like, so what is it, right? So just like everybody else, I got on the wait list. I got the free chat GPT tool, right? Tested it out. So um, using a lot more for just like marketing, simple, basic things, yeah. right? Like, you know, hey, um, take this email and rewrite it in a very sympathetic tone, right? Because sometimes yeah. we take over really harsh. So just basic things like that. That's how I got into it. But it it was a productivity tool. That's how it kind of came about is yeah. it does different things. And so having these three simple basic tools are like my day-to-day go-to items. It's wild, isn't it? How it is like a day-to-day -to -day tool. It yeah, is. same thing with me, you know, I'm, I've always been kind of an early adopter, but I'm also super careful about sharing with people when I adopt something because you never want to encourage a family to adopt a puppy when they live in a small house, right? So like, you don't, don't mention it to your sure, but like you, once I saw the value prop and how chat GPT just became part of my day, I was like, this is amazing. Then the more I dug into it, like, okay, this isn't writing emails. This is doing so many more features. But I thought we'd start with like a little bit around just chat GPT, like the understanding of it. Because I think as a large language model, uh, we hear that word thrown around sometimes. It's kind of hard to kind of get your head around it. So can I share with you how I explain it to other people or show you how I explain it to people? Yeah, I go for it. Yeah. So I've got a couple, uh, I guess, visual aids here. Um, so first things first, we're talking about all these different tools, Airtable, AI, and everything else. So I created this stack diagram to help people understand where I do things. So just like you, I kind of have a, a part of my day vertically here uh, for when I'm brainstorming, then a part of my day for when I'm designing, when I'm building, when I'm actually publicizing, and when I'm monetizing. So when I think about 
no code and AI and all these things. Obviously, I can have it write emails, the brainstorming stuff. I can have it do a lot of thinking for me. But it, for me, it's really always been about making it real actionable. And then I take those silos and kind of break them across horizontally. So I have a design horizontal layer, which is like, okay, I can draw pictures and create bases and put front ends on them and use AI, do all that. But like, where do I get the idea for the imagery? And I basically have two that I use. Streamline, which is just a bunch of icons and like a design set and then joy pixels. So one, as you can tell, is super businessy, very black and white, and one is more colorful. After that, I have my no-code stack horizontally. I always start with everything in Miro. I like draw pictures and like, hey, I kind of want it to feel like this, stuff like that. I do a lot of mind maps, like, okay, they would go like this. Then obviously I take that and go to Airtable and build something. From there, I will actually always put a friend on, on it. I use Pori, but there's stacker, uh, softer, um, there's a lot of front ends now and it's more and more every single day. So when I say front end, that just means your Airtable is great as are your data, but you want some like an accessible public website without more licenses. Um, and then to me, the last step is always monetization. A lot of people think the website is monetization, but if someone can't book time with you or buy something you're doing right now, I think it's kind of, why did you build it? Yep. Sounds, does it sound hard that way? It sounds hard, doesn't it? No, it's great. Like I love the flow and it, it needs to be strategic, right? Everything that you're building and putting together. So this is a great timeline for, for people to follow. Exactly. I, I, I always tell people, it's got to make you money. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the last layer, obviously, is the AI layer, right? And that's actually the foundational layer, because as you said, from writing emails to having it create concepts and ideas, each one of these things kind of fall over it. So for Miro, I can have it create you know, business ideas, value propositions. When it comes to Airtable, I can literally have it create, sorry, my dogs are fighting. I, I have it create the table structure. I have it create the fill-in fields and we'll do all this today. When it comes to Pori, I actually have it create content, the legal terms and processes, the SEO updates, the marketing, I mean, all this kind of stuff. And then I even use something called Synesthesia, which takes the scripts from all that content and uses AI generated people to speak. Wow. So, yeah I'll, show you, that. yeah, I'll show you some of that. I wasn't planning to, but I actually, I'll, I'll remember to do that right now. Um, so once I have that done and have that process, that's how I do my work. But let's roll back and let's look at this open AI layer. When we think of large language models, it's really sometimes it's hard for people to get their head around it. So I always like to use this slide. So like if you take all the data, everything from that training foundational model adaptation, forget all that. Just look at the data siloed in front of you. All of that exists on the internet today. There's lots of text, there's lots of images, there's videos, uh, structured data, unstructured data, there's signals coming in from all these systems saying I'm up, I'm down, et cetera. And you create a training on it. Training just means look at these things and bring it back in a way that it's understandable. And if it's not understandable, I'm going to train you on how to understand it. And I think a lot of people struggle with this idea of training and training is just like if someone handed you this pile of paper, no, no technology, just this pile of paper. And I said, Lisa, here's my paper, Lisa. You'd be like, well, you got a letter here from Scott Thrift. You've got something from uh, the New York State Tax Department. You've got a bill from the doctor's office. So yeah, Chris, I'll organize this for you. You're just training. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're going to take these and put them in an order. That's all training is. From there, it creates what we call the foundational model. So foundational model is basically how it knows to respond to the world. And then it can adapt. So you can say, hey, answer a question on the stack of paper. Hey, tell me how the stack of, stack of paper feels. Is it good news? Is it bad news? Hey, show me where this is in that stack of paper. Extraction, right? Mm -hmm. Is this making sense? I don't know if I've ever had to explain this publicly before, but- uh, Yeah, no, it makes, makes perfect sense. All right, so that's kind of AI and large language models at a high level. At a low level, when it comes down to you and me in everyday life, all of this work has been done for us. So we really come down to now, how do we talk to it? And that comes into this concept that you probably heard, it's all over the internet now called prompt engineering. Have you heard of prompt engineering? Yep, really popular right now. Really popular right now. And to me, prompt engineering, if we just remove all the tech is just how you would maybe train a puppy or, or, or raise a child. It's just that you get some information back from the puppy or the child and you teach it how that information should look, right? So if you're teaching a dog to sit, he's not gonna understand the word sit, he's not gonna understand anything, but he'll occasionally just sit on his own and that's when you say, that's a sit, right? And then when you want him to sit, you say sit and then eventually you get rid of the word and you use a hand signal. 
So I always think of people like there's a couple different parts of the prompt. There's the description. So basically what you want the system to act like. You are realtor a, uh, GPT. Your job is to help realtors write amazing property descriptions. It's a great task description. GPT then knows when I'm answering, I'm going to answer from this domain. So all that information it has, and now has a filter for that information. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then you have the input indicator. And that just means, so this is who you are. Now, how are you going to be talked to? It might be a question. You might ask it for a form letter. You might ask it help writing an email, right? So you, a lot of people ask it to write the email, but they won't say how. Like when you and I were talking earlier, it was like, hey, write it simpler. Like you can do all that up front and actually say you are, you know, a highly respected agent, you know, et cetera. Um, and then the last, and then you've got the current input. And we're going to do all this in our table today. So this is going to be exciting because you're going to see us do all parts of these. And the last part is the output. And that's like, when you answer the question, make it look like this. So when I do mine, I literally tell it, bold this, send me at least three paragraphs, put paragraphs break in there. You know what I mean? So yeah. most people don't really understand that the prompt engineering is really so much bigger than like knowing how to talk to it. It's knowing how to micro train it. And you don't have to get overwhelmed because unlike childs and dogs, it just goes and goes and goes. So you can keep practicing and just never let it teach you how to talk. Yeah. All right. <laughs> With that, I've done three of these projects, one for my house, one for my village, and one for my county. And I'm right in the middle of a new one for my county where we're putting a front end on all of the county. But before we get into that and get into Airtable, you want to get in and just look at some of the simple things you can do and just chat GPT, and yeah. not connected to Airtable? All right. Yeah. Now, did you want to share anything or do you want me just to jump in and share some stuff? I'll, I'll let you drive the seat. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and share my GPT window. And there's a lot of fun stuff in there. So for you, those of you with Pinch and Zoom, this is your place to, to thrive. So I think some of my best practices and take this with a grain of salt is I have a different chat for every thing I'm doing. I don't just have one that I keep running. Because once you train it, so if I come down here to some of my, you know, earliest ones, you see this one on tech name, magic and ritual. Once I train it, if I go all the way to the top and I tell it, let me scroll here a little faster so you can see how I trained it in the very, very beginning. Create a, create a chant to summon a goddess. And then I, it creates a goddess for me. Then I tell it who is tech name. It tells me it is tech name. So I spent a good, maybe five, 10 minutes just training this to become a digital goddess that would answer my questions day to day. Why I keep the same chat is because if I ever want to talk to the goddess again, I'm not gonna open up a new chat because that's I have to redo all the training. So yeah. pro tip number one is if you're working on a website or a customer project, or you wanna create like a therapy bot, stay in the same chat. Very don't creep, creating, don't keep, creep. This is my dead mother. This is how I talk to her. So I put in hundreds of pages of my mom's letters to me over the years, and I now have a, a bot for her. That probably creeped out anybody watching. So first tip, stay in the same chat. So now let's go ahead that we know that because you're like, okay, why do you have all these chats? It's because each one kind of does something different. Mm. I, if you want to create a new chat, you just come in here and we're kind of have a brand new one. First thing you're going to see when you get into ChatGPT, depending on what plan you have, is you'll see a bunch of different models. Now models are just different builds kind of like Microsoft Office 97 versus Office 2000, right? So mm -hmm. this is a uh, default GPT, which is the fastest, newest one most people get, legacy, which is a little bit slower. And if you click on these, you'll see they actually show you that their ability to understand and do things is different. So their reasoning, their speed, and their content and their consciousness is layered. By default, most people on the free plan are kind of three, five, and it's super fast. So we're just going to start there. And we're just going to do a simple training. And we're going to say, uh, you are website assistant, GPT, and you can misspell all you want and it does a great job knowing what you want. You are going to help me build a database and website for a new company called Lisa Realty. Lisa Realty focuses on helping agents create listings, uh, education, find education resources, and 
uh, balance work life. So it's going to take that. So again, I didn't start with write me an email. I said, create my life. Right. Right. I just had an idea. Lisa and I, did we, we didn't talk about this, right? I just kind of said it. So yeah. the first thing it does is it creates a business plan for me and tells me kind of what we should do for purposes and goals. So the goal of the website is to get people to sign up and pay for my monthly um, listings class and use the resources for membership. Okay, so it's, it's given me a lot more. Like, don't get overwhelmed by this because we just need yeah. to, to stay simple. Can you create a name for the website and a short tagline? Very neat. So right away, we have our website name. We have some taglines, so we know good. I like Agent Hub. Let's go with that. Because I will have, um, sorry. What three pages do I need to start with for Agent Hub? So it gives me my three pages, my class okay. page, my membership portal, and my homepage. We actually could build this. I actually, I'm thinking we literally could now yeah. jump over. Yeah, but we're going to get there in a second. That's amazing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, pro tip, always thank the AI. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm building an Airtable database to host this website um, behind what tables would map for the website and what fields should be in the database? That's fantastic. It's basically your database engineer. Yep. Can you create those tables in CS, CSV format? And you just import these into our table. Wow. And it's creating your education resources. And <laughs> That's great. So does that kind of make sense at a high level on like treat GPT, each chat as a project, define it from the start, like who you are and what you did. And if you've got lots of chats, just start over, start a new one, but stay in that same chat. Because now as we keep asking this question, so I always gonna go back to the name, the structure of the site, the database structure, and it's gonna keep evolving those things. Yeah. Question, so what are you thinking? Yeah, no, that's great. I never thought about organizing my chats because I mean, no one ever taught me to structure it and organize it. So I just have one big chat window. So I've got a bunch of mess all in one big chat. And so it's probably getting, and I share it with multiple people, uh, yeah. right? In my team. so. If my assistant's putting in something that's completely irrelevant to who I am as a person, our voices get mixed up all the time. So thank you. This is like the number one takeaway if I don't remember anything else. Uh, just the organizing of the chats is amazing. Yeah, and I always remember that when you have a chat, it's remembering. I mean, you've got one big chat with everything in it. I mean, it can do it, but it constantly will not stay in voice and on mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. Right? So like you could write a letter in Microsoft Excel, but you're going to get a better response out of Microsoft Word, right? I don't even yeah. pull a Clippy reference out now. <laughs> so that's kind of chat GPT if you're just using it to help you with your business. And of course, if, if you, I'm sure everyone knows this because everybody talks about it, uh, but we could, you know, come in here and tell it, uh, write an email to write an email, write email, write email copy, introducing the new service 
This is how most people use it. They'll tell it to write an email. But because right. I've already done all the work, it now can write the copy without me telling it a bunch. That's Create great. five tweets about the new service. Love it. Create three Instagram ideas about the service. So again, because we used one chat, we're keeping the one project in there now, everything from emails to the sort of stuff we can do. So now let's take it about, let's talk about integrating now with Airtable, right? Mm -hmm. So at the first integration level, we've already seen that it will create a table structure. It will create sample. Well, this, it gave us some sample data, but you could actually create it, have it create more sample data. You know, I love, you know, stuff with stuff like, I need a sample sample data with dates for the for two weeks starting May 1st 2023 with the sunrise and sunset for uh, Amsterdam New York because maybe I want to be able to have the best times to show a house like right at sunset when it's getting the best look. So I'm just gonna have it create some sample data for me. So when people book appointments, I only make times in those windows open to see the house and it created the appointment booking times for that. Does that make sense? Brilliant, yeah. Okay. I don't wanna, don't wanna go too fast, but again, so we've got, think of an air table or think of a business, now think of a website, now build the air table. Now create some content in that air table. Now create a bunch of sample content, create some marketing stuff. And we did all of that in five minutes, 10 minutes. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> so now let's make it actionable. So there are a lot of ways you can use this content in your air table. Obviously, you can come in here and you know, paste it into your Airtable. You can import a CSV. If you're watching this video, hopefully you know a little bit about Airtable. But one of my favorite things to do with this content nowadays is to really think about how people can take, how can I give these skills to a stranger on my site? And what I mean by that is I want anyone to be able to ask my business or me information about my services, right? So almost like a chat bot, but almost I call it the advocator bot. So in this case, I have uh, an air table here called Ab Montgomery County GPT. That's where I live. And I have a table called advocate. And what I do is I collect people's names, their email addresses, a focus, something about that focus, a language and an output. So let's talk about what all this means. So I could come in here and I want you to watch as I, I want you to watch this last A, I'm um, sorry, I want you to watch this AI input section. So I'm going to come in here and say, I'm Chris Dancy, chris.dancy at gmail.com. I need help with learning about history. I am moving to the area and I am Hispanic and I want to learn about your Hispanic heritage. I can't see behind my, so I'm looking down on my computer. Yeah. Heritage. Uh, with the county. So you'll notice that I typed that. And when I did, it filled out a bunch of stuff over here. Yeah. Right. So if you've used Airtable, you, you probably already know all I'm doing is I have a concatenate field where I have in a, a sentence around the information I'm putting in. This is super, super important. This is like the dream video. This makes air, hopefully this is going to make uh, AI simpler than anyone's ever realized it. Because what you're doing now is if you remember when we were talking about our prompt engineering, mm -hmm. we are creating our input. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now that we're creating that input, chat GPT knows to do something with it. All right. So it's like super, super simple. So I'm going to come in here now and you can see here that I don't have an answer. And we're going to go about like, how do we get this in chat GPT now? Do we want people to use our, our air table? No, you could fill out a form. So someone could come in here and they could very quickly put a form on the front of this. And then that form 
they could fill it out. But let's be honest, the forms aren't very pretty. Yeah. It doesn't look very good. So let's let's not let's not do it for them. Um, it'd be easier, I think, if we had maybe a really simple, pretty form builder. So one I've been using lately is something called Fillout. So Fillout has a free program. Uh, I'd used Typeform forever because I think it's really gorgeous. I used Jotform. I used them all, but they have a free program that works just as good. So I'm going to go into Fillout. And I'm going to go into my Montgomery County GPT. And right away, it allows you to create pages. So you'll see down here at the bottom, create a page. And it asks you what type of page you want to create, either a welcome page where it just has a big welcome sign, or it has uh, a form page where you collect the forms. And what's really amazing about this tool is it's so easy. You've got all of your Airtable fields right in here. So if I were to add a new field to this program, if I were to come in here and create a field called, are you a citizen of Montgomery? And just put a yes or no. And save that. Now I want to come over to fill out. Fill out's really fast. So if I tell it to refresh, It'll go out, sync with the database and pull that field in and I can just drop it right on there. So That's now great. I have another attribute I can pass through to the input field. This person is a citizen, this person not a citizen. Maybe for non-citizens, we want to encourage them to invite them to visit. And we'll get into that in a minute, but we just want to understand kind of the basics. Because I think fill out for me is one of these great tools because what it does is it instantly allows you to put a website on your Airtable and your GPT integration. Because here's a website, looks gorgeous. I come in here, I say, I'm Chris Dancy, Chris, Chris at chrisdancy.com. You ask them for their email, you ask them what they're doing. I'm planning a trip. I'm coming in the fall. And I need to know some things to do for a three-day trip. Also, um, can you plan three days in the area for me and my family with two kids? I'd like the answer sent back to me in English and hit send. So that's going to go into the database. You'll see it's here came in from the form. It's right there already. I'm coming in the, is this the right one? 422. Oh, I got to go down here. Probably at the bottom. the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm right here. I'm coming in the fall. Now, if we go over to the automations, you will see in the run history, see here it's in progress. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into the script in a minute and we're going to look at what this is. But right now it's sending that input up to chat GPT. Once chat GPT gets the input, it's going to take any prompting. I told it, think like this, return answers like that and send me back an answer. So the answer, obviously, we've just got this great form that we're collecting out there. There's no answer out on that form and, it's, and it didn't run. So I'll have to go see where, where it failed. Um, oh, it took too long. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I, yeah. If I, sometimes you have to increase the length of time on it. So let me go back here for a second and I'll go ahead and do uh, my form. I'll ask again. And you can increase your buffer time depending on how verbose you are. Some people are super verbose. When I create the really simple ones, I usually not that verbose. Planning trip. Uh, I'm coming in the fall. Help me with activities for my family. English sent. Come back over here, running our automations. So this automation is running again. So let's talk about this automation is doing while it's running. So the first thing it's doing is something really simple. It's just when a record's created. So when a record's created on our table, which was our advocate table, it's just mm -hmm. going to do something, right? So it's saying when a, auto, when, a, when a record's created, what do you want to do? So the next thing it's doing is going to run a script. This is where you're going to come in, you're going to copy. I have a temporary chat GTP key in here. You want to take your key, put that in. The next thing you want to do is you want to tell it your prompt. So how do you want to think? So in this case, I'm saying you are Montgomery County, New York, government artificial agent support bot. You help citizens do four things, plan trips. And notice how it kind of matches the form, even though you don't need to do that specifically. Um, and then how to do it. 
And then it's going to take that and then run it against the actual script itself. So the script is something you can, there's a couple different scripts on the Airtable community forms. You can read it to me and I'll send you my script. But all it's doing is it's coming through and it's pulling in some variables like your key, how you want it to think, temperature, presence, penalty, prompt and model. Just use the defaults. You can do other things, but that gets, it sometimes can be a little, uh, it can be a little bit much if you know what I mean. Um, and then from there, it's gonna update the record. So if we go out and look at our base, we can see here that had my AI input, then it wrote the letter back. Wow. So now if I got to my email, the second step of that is sending the customer the information. So if you're a realtor saying, I need to create a listing and you could fill out a form and say, tell me about the house. Yep. A big form for that, it would just create an amazing listing. So a realtor could sell this as a service to new realtors or uh, legally, uh, someone's thinking about moving to this town. Tell me about that town. And you can have a list of towns. Tell me about that town, HOAs, covenants, and rules. It would send the user those types of things, right? That would be so, such a time saver. Right? So, you know, the idea is like, how do we make, and I'm going to go back to what I was saying before. How do we take an air table that your whole business is running on? You just have this last tab here that's mm -hmm. not your business. It's what we would call your support. And you make that actionable by putting a nice front end on it that people can use. And what I tell people all the time is you can charge for this, put this behind a login, right? And then people who pay you $5 or $10 a month can come in, use ChatGPT because they don't need to do it, but they're using it through your business. So this comes to the big part, right? So like, what's the value prop? Like what's stopping everybody from doing this? Why wouldn't Lisa, well, I think everybody will do it, but like what's Lisa's value prop? Well, Lisa knows the, the business, she knows how to work with agents. She understands kind of what their struggles are. The value of AI is not AI, it's the prompt. Yeah. And if you know Airtable and you have a special skill like Lisa with Realty or me with, I don't know, I like lots of things. <laughs> um, you could build a form to collect the information, create an amazing prompt and send back the most amazing information. Does that make sense the way I'm explaining it? Yeah, that is a fantastic breakdown workflow. And I never dreamt that that all could work together in one space. So yeah, I, I agree. I think small business owners, especially consultants and people who have a specialty, right, should be doing this all day long, right? Like click funnels was the thing in the past, right? And uh, connecting that to multiple different integrations. And that's what literally people pay me to consult all day long. Like, how do I do all these things? Now you simply applied it, especially in this no code community to just these few tools and you can run everything on this. So. Yeah. And that's what I just, I, that's what I think is so empowering by this because like at this, at this level, it's just. Amazing. I'll show you a customer I'm working with currently. So she's an event planner and we launched a new service for her company. Um, and she has a community of thousands of people, uh, but she wanted to create a database of other event organizers, of mm -hmm. service providers for event venues, and then for, for venues themselves. And she wanted anyone to be able to get listed, like, hey, ha have your event at my house, or hey, hire me to do balloons or speaking, or hey, I want to be listed as an organizer. But what she did was she made levels that people could pay. So this was our, our preview for prototype site. So there's a free level where you can get just get listed, or there's a paid level where you can come in here and be listed as pro. And what happens is if you're part of our network, your, your listing is really robust. You have a button where you can get paid instantly for your time. Super simple. Wow. I'm going to continue to go there. Uh, sorry. And you can pay Caitlin to book time with her. Um, let me go back to pop event. Um, but more importantly, you can log into her site. So if you're a member, you can come into the site. Let me go ahead and log in as one of our members. You can, and this is using Pori. Oh man, I don't remember Caitlin's password. Shoot. Uh, I asked her to change it so that I wouldn't be, I don't like getting into other people's information. Yeah, same. I'm so weird about that. Yeah. All right. So what's really cool is you can get in. So I logged in with another user um, and you can update your table record. But more importantly, because you're in now as a paid member, you can actually come in here, review any of those organizations or you have access to AI support, which basically walks you through helping you plan an event.
using pop wow. lines with all of her prompts that we put in her system. That's great. But, yeah, so it became just a really great way to like say, how do I take a business she's already doing successful with and then monetize it to another level to get value from all the people she's connected to, but also create a way that it kind of feeds back on itself. And again, when these people are telling us how they're thinking, they're actually training future versions of the system. Yeah, no, yeah. that's fantastic. I, I love that. I network with a lot of people, agent directories, and they have all specialties and stuff. So I'm always networking, connecting people. And this is a great way I could have a membership site and say, Hey, you get access to the best of the best and I can vouch for them and, you know, things like that. So that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun for me. Cause I think once I learned kind of the basics of like, okay, Airtable is kind of the prompt and the input and everything, right? Cause you're just using that concatenate field. They're like, really, then it comes like, okay, I can take people with any specialty and get them to create me. Like what questions would you ask someone? Yeah. And then, you know, you saw it in the script. I said, you are Montgomery County GPT, answer this way, right? So now I'm even telling it how to answer back. And I think what's what's really empowering about this is it really isn't, no matter what your specialty is, if you know Airtable and you practice a little bit with ChatGPT, you can do amazing things. Last week, I created something called The Advocator. We had about a half a million people visit. The Advocator yeah. uh, helps uh, people with just advocator.ai but uh, it helps with social issues. So black lives, trans lives, Asian lives, uh, LGBTQ, uh, health issues, COVID, HIV, health equity, and then support neurodiversity. But what's really cool about this is it's your story plus AI. So you come in, you click the advocate button, you fill out the form and it sends you back a letter that will advocate for you or your family for the things you need to send to a company or an individual that might not understand. Because a lot of people find it hard to write the words. But the advocator was specially trained to advocate around these specific issues. So if you come into the advocator, it just asks you, what are you advocating for? And this will all start to look really familiar to you. So I'm advocating for health equity. And who do you want to advocate with? I'll say St. Mary's Hospital. You want it to tweet, so it'll actually tweet out for you, your avocation. And I can, I can put in my Twitter handle. Yeah. And then again, same thing, ask you who you are, what your name is, what your story is, and how you want your answer back. And what's really amazing about the how you want your answer back is a lot of people, we always assume everybody's a native English speaker. Well, mm -hmm. because we're doing chat GBT, it can answer in any question. Help me explain my need to have masks in hospital for my child who is immuno. Compromise. And I'll say, give this back to me in Spanish. The advocator will run, and then what it'll do is it'll send us back an answer in that email in Spanish. That's great. Yeah. So I mean, it's a lot of the brain workout and the content writing. And you're right. You know, you're basically having a website portal that you can go in and just, you know, type in a natural language our day to day and it'll spit out the prompts for you without having to think of the prompts and going to chat GPT to do that. That's, that's fantastic. And, and if you're a creator like you, Lisa, where, you know, Airtable, you've used AI, you have a business. We've now looked at create a business for me, create the tables for me, create the offerings, the emails, right? Everyone's been doing, you know, maybe that's all new for some people watching this video, but we've then said now monetize around what I know by creating my last table where I can ask people for what I can help them with. And I don't intervene because I've already done the help by knowing what questions to ask, how to tell chat GPT to think you are this GPT and send the answer back like that. And in that way, you only add on to your services from then forward. So if you wanted to add on another agent service that does, you know, you know, find communities, you know, I'm looking for a house or, you know, something I think is going to be really important. I don't know why more agents aren't doing this is, uh, climate relocation specialists. So people who want to have a house in a specific part of the country, you know, maybe you've got some requirements. GPT is great for that. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think about it. We have a lot of people relocating to Denver um, just yeah. because they love the outdoor space. And then when they retire, they love to go to Florida, somewhere a little bit more tropical, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of the balance. Yeah. So that's, that's a fantastic idea. I would definitely start prompting my Airtable to get those outputs. So Anything yeah. else you can think of? I don't want to leave you too high and dry, but I know when we originally talked, you're like, I would love to do a video where you explain some of this, but I also know I go super fast. 
No, I mean, that's a great breakdown. Um, I think just getting in there and just learning the day to day and just building all of this, right? So I think my challenge is always I'm repeating the same information knowledge over and over again to like hundreds of agents, right? So at the end of the day, I'm just so fried because all of my knowledge is just out there. I have to think about it on a one-on-one -on -one capacity, but this is great. I can store all my knowledge base in one place in Airtable, have it prompt out, and then depending on where they are location wise or what they're looking for, it just spits out the specialty. So I no longer have to spend all these hours on support and things. My basically my poor, my website can do that all for it. So I love that it's no code too. <laughs> One of the things I love about this is you can take your same, remember we created the advocate table where it actually comes back and tells you like, you know, people can ask questions or we had that one for Montgomery County. One of the yeah. things that people don't even, you know, really consider is like, you could then come in and create a really simple, new field that's not part of the AI, just called category. And we'll make this a single select. And we could put, you know, uh, travel, I'm sorry, travel, um, business, et cetera. And then as these questions come in, you could then publish these questions as an FAQ by creating another field that uses a trim and removes the personalized information. That is amazing. And just publish that to- Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you could have AI bring the information back, like the public information in your script, you could say drop it in this field, but you could say, you know, bring back just the core information and drop it in another field. So it's really about doing everything we love with Airtable and fields and saying, okay, we have a base understanding of AI and Airtable. We know how to put these things together. We know how to put them out. And then from there, you start building these, these bigger and bigger solutions. Wow. Fantastic. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. I've learned so much in this short amount of time that we spent together, but um, I, I really yeah. appreciate you asking to do this because I know for me, I get overwhelmed. Like I don't want to be on camera and I feel so dumb trying to explain myself. And no, uh, not at all. I think more people can really benefit from this. You've done an amazing job with our Facebook community, right? Like even better than Airtable support. I hate to say that, uh, but you know, oh. community is great. I've, I've learned so much. <laughs> Right. Um, and just the ability to do things, right? Like people just don't have time to research or put it all together, right? Like the the logic doesn't click sometimes, right? And yeah. you just need to see how it can work in action, the things that we yeah. can dream of. So I love your dreaming sessions. I love to continue, you know, having these kind of sessions, but definitely I think the community can definitely um, you know, benefit from this. So keep creating content. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at it. Ben is my inspiration for content. Uh ben where can people <laughs> right? He's, and he brings his dog into it. Like my dog is too, well, my little dog's not too big to bring up. I don't know where she is. <laughs> um, where can people find you, Lisa, if they're having questions about real estate or any of your businesses or just want to work with you? Um, yeah, so I'm still building out my website. Um, obviously, we'll do that afterwards, but it's uh, right now FUB. So F-U-B stands for follow boss dot simply closed dot house. Uh, my other website is simply closed dot com, but still working on building out both of them. But you can find me on any of those. Plus, you also you're in the group. If anyone's in who's part of yeah. watches this video is in our Facebook group, I'll put a link to the Facebook group in this video. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun hanging out with you today, and just in full transparency, Lisa booked this time with me, but I was like 30 minutes late, so I apologize and throw yourself and on the knife of public shame in front of everyone and say I apologize. I pride myself on being on time, and I couldn't today. You're good. You're good. Um, I appreciate it. You know, what you took, like I said, just in these few minutes together, like I've learned, you know, I feel like weeks and months of things that I could have taken forever to learn. So I appreciate uh -huh. you out the time. And, you know, if you haven't signed up yet, definitely go to their table. I will be there. It's my first one. I'm super excited, super pumped for it. So can't wait to see what their table and the rest of the community does. They do amazing things. We've got like four or five sessions now on AI. It's going to be so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can probably teach my session. Okay, well, thank you, Lisa. I'll chat with you later. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, everyone.